Hello again and welcome to part two of our swing comparison of Jason Duffner and his idol Ben Hogan. Uh, Jason Duffner being the recent 2013 US PGA champion and a World Hall of Fame golfer Ben Hogan on the right is regarded as his idol and uh, a lot of things in Ben Hogan's swing Jason Duffner's tried to incorporate in his swing and uh, there are some similarities more so from the down the line view than so much from the face on. Um, ben Hogan was regarded as one of the best ball strikers if not the best ball striker of all time and Jason Dufton is certainly forming a reputation for being one of the best ball strikers in the game. One of the things Ben Hogan talked about was uh, the constant motion. You don't want to stand over the ball and freeze and get locked in position and one thing that Jason does, which is kind of an old fashioned, old school way, is he likes to waggle his club back and forward behind the ball before he begins his swing. And you'll see this is not something you see very often, but he's kind of just called a waggle. It's more of a wrist and a hand movement. It's certainly not the way he swings his golf club. And Ben Hogan also had a waggle. Um, this video here unfortunately doesn't show it, but what the waggle does and it's kind of a dying art among many players is it just re helps relieve tension and keeps keeps the body moving if you put that club down behind the ball and and stand there frozen it's really difficult to get the club moving away properly you'll notice there as Jason sort of finishes that waggle he gets the club down on the ground and basically straight away the, the backswing begins so that's a really good thing, I like that. I think if you stand over the ball too long and your brain can lock up and too many thoughts going on in your mind, it's never a good thing. And we've got a pretty good camera angle here with Jason. And we go ahead and draw in our reference lines. Ball might be, the camera might be slightly close to the ball, but it's pretty close. The camera with uh, Ben Hogan obviously the quality of the camera is not as good and I would say this camera is a little bit too close to being behind the ball so notice that Ben appears to be aiming to the right and this this toe line out to the right was something he often did to be honest with you his shoulders appear relatively square along with his hips but he used to often play with more of a closed stance particularly with his long clubs his driver in particular he'd get that a little more square to open with his shorter irons if we go ahead and look at the way Jason starts his takeaway, you'll notice the first thing I see is the club tends to move around behind him. Now, again, this may be a little bit off with the camera angle. Perhaps the club is not this far behind his hands, as, as it might indicate. But if you look really closely here, Jason's club face the toe of this club is very vertical basically pointing straight up towards the sky now I would regard that as being an open club face a lot of people think the toe vertical here is square in reality for it to be square it would be, it would be more more closer to 90 degrees to this plane this original shaft plane so club face is a little open in the takeaway and that's certainly something that Ben talked about as Ben was a younger pro, he used to hit a lot of hooks and basically ruined a lot of his chances to win tournaments and as he came a little older and understood his swing a little more, he weakened off his grip, moved his, turned both his hands more to the left and played more open club face golf, really didn't like to, to hook the ball very much, it was very anti-hook and we're not able to see the club face here unfortunately due to the quality of the camera back in the day but Trust me when I tell you, Ben Ben didn't have closed club face in his golf swing. We used to talk about the left wrist being cupped, trying to keep the face open with his cupping of the left wrist, his weaker left hand grip. Now for a lot of golfers trying to copy that kind of swing, amateur golfers, that's just going to cause a big slice. But for Ben, being very strong and athletic, it worked well. So there's one comparison that's similar. Jason gets the club club face open in the takeaway. The next thing you'll notice at the top of the backswing that both of these golfers have the left arm 
more across the chest and, and lower or below the shoulder plane, the top of the swing. A lot of your modern golfers would have the hands up here nearer to the shoulder plane from a dress. You see Jason is quite below that. His hands are sort of in between the two red lines. A lot of modern golfers would be more up on that top line. Noticing also there with Jason that the right elbow is very tight into the body. Now this is not something that I really like to teach my students and it's not something you see a lot of but works well for Jason. So it's a very compact sort of tight top of the backswing position relatively flat or shallow arm swing um, and quite similar to Ben Hogan in a lot of ways you see Jason's head goes a little bit down to the ground which Ben Hogan's head also did tended to lower down a little bit towards the ground in the backswing Jason's back leg the right leg is more straight than you might expect now I'm not suggesting that it is straight, but it's not very bent. And uh, if you look at the front of Ben's leg here, it's got more more flex. So I think Jason's right leg is a little straighter than, uh, than Ben and probably more straight than I would see most good players do. Now in the transition and the downswing, if you looked at the part one of this video, you will notice I talked about how both of these golfers have tremendous transition and sequencing of the lower body leading the upper body and Jason definitely does do that. You see the legs moving out of the way, the hips starting to rotate out to the left before the chest and then as he does that the shaft and the club and the hands will, will bring the club down so it's leading from the lower body, very very important and Ben talked about this in his books and absolutely had fantastic sequence and see here as he's striking the ball how how much he's cleared through his left through his left hip he's rotated his hips through the shoulders are slightly open to square the foot the right foot's rolling more to the inside of the instep rather than the heel lifting up off the ground you see a very similar thing here with Jason a great transition the sequence from the ground up lower body leads the upper body all right, you'll see the, the shaft nicely on plane at this point of the swing right there points pretty much down towards the golf ball okay. Jason rolls onto the instep of his foot as did Ben Hogan okay. after impact like all good players he gets taller as you can see so did Ben it's taller after impact not keeping their head down not trying to keep the head stationary that's really a bad thing to do in the golf swing and you see how the, the ball heads off there towards the target and the club exits out to the left you see both of these players have a very high finish even though the backswing was relatively low with the hands left arm more across the chest when the hands exit on the other side of the body they exit quite high the club shaft is quite upright now the same was true with Ben, his club used to exit much higher in the follow through, his hands were high at the end which is indicative of a fade finish, more of a high hand at the end more of a rounded finish is more you'd typically see for a draw now, Jason Duffner having won his first major championship just recently has a great golf swing he has a few issues with his putting but he's he struck the ball so well that particular week he really won it with his long game didn't have to putt that well because he only had very short putts all the time but um, Jason Duffner is regarded by his peers as one of the best ball strikers and I think you see this very simple repeatable golf swing he's going to produce a lot of great golf shots I really like it I like a lot of things that he does. I'm not sure that it's right for everybody, um, but you know that's just how he hits it. He's followed his idol Ben Hogan. I love his waggle. I like his takeaway club face a little more open than I would normally like to see. But hey, if you just won the US PGA Championship, you know what you're doing. Wouldn't think he's going to be working too much on his swing, just trying to maintain the mechanics and perhaps improve his short game a little bit. So there you have it. Jason Duffner, 
Ben Hogan. There are a few similarities in the two swings. Um, both worked well. Just goes to show you a lot of practice you can you can get it sorted out. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.